Welcome everyone to Coffee with Coaches presented by Jennings Java. I'm Tom Caudill and joining me today is Muskingum Volleyball Assistant Coach Taylor Huey. Taylor, welcome to Coffee with Coaches. Hi Tom, thanks for having me. Hey uh, Taylor, just so you know, Coffee with Coaches presented by Jennings Java. Uh, freshest roast around for anyone looking for that fresh roast experience, JenningsJava.com. Daniel Jennings was a musky student athlete here, uh, graduated as a men's soccer player and now highly successful uh, with the Jennings Java brand. Uh, Taylor, this is a great chance for you and I to get together, talk some volleyball, uh, have some fun questions answered, and let people get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready to start? Absolutely. All right. Uh, Taylor, homegrown right here in New Concord, Muskingum University, really in your backyard the whole time growing up. Um, when did you start playing volleyball here in New Concord? I started playing going into my sixth grade year, um, started playing club right off the bat um, and then joined the middle school team. Um, and then it was my passion kind of all the way through. So ever since like sixth grade. So sixth grade going up after the middle school here, you go right to John Glenn High School. Uh, any other sports besides volleyball or any other activities that John Glenn you were involved with? Yeah, I played basketball and ran track. Loved loved being a three-sport athlete. I was constantly doing something. You know, the three-sport athletes, I mean, that's so common in the high school realm to find those three different sports. Uh, what was it that got you to kind of focus in on, on volleyball? Um... I would say it was kind of like my first love, my first sport love. I was the most passionate about it. Um, coach Ziha, our former head coach here, um, she immediately was my club coach in sixth grade. Um, so she got me very passionate about the game very early. <laughs> you know, when you think back about high school, being a three sport um, athlete, what are some favorite memories, whether it's from volleyball, track or basketball? You know, my favorite memories looking back now would be my senior year of volleyball. One, um, getting to play with my sister. Two, uh, went undefeated that year. So it was a great way to end high school. Um, another couple favorite memories would be in track, going to the state tournaments, uh, being on the same relay as my sister. That was always fun. Um, so those are looking back, those immediate things for me. Yeah, let's talk about your sister, Brooke. I mean, the opportunity, A, to play together in high school is has got to be very special, but you carried it over into playing together here at Muskingum. Um, what's it like having your sister on your team? Well, in high school, it was like a typical big sister. Like, um, I'm kind of overpowering you. If you want to call it a dictatorship with a big sister, you <laughs> Um, but she was my setter. So that was a lot of fun. Different going into college. In college, you don't get that opportunity a lot to play with a sibling. Um, so I looked at her completely different. I looked at her as this is my senior year of college, my last year of actually playing ball. Um, and the talent that she has, like everything that she has carried over, I kind of appreciated that more in college because now we're getting to go further with you and things like that. So it was, it was totally different, exciting, but totally different. You know, you talk about the coaching aspect now. When did you realize that being a coach is something that you wanted to pursue? Honestly, Tom, I didn't know that until I graduated college. I originally wanted to go into law enforcement. My whole family's in law enforcement. Um, and I did pursue that route as soon as I graduated. Um, and quickly, once I found out that that's not what I wanted to do with my life, um, I had during that time, I was just volunteering here with Coach Cruzen, um, and I really loved it. Um, didn't realize how much I loved it. And then once I kind of found out, hey, law enforcement isn't really what I want to do, um, talked with Hallie, and Hallie said, I'd love to bring you on full time, and took that opportunity, and it's been the best thing, really. You know, when you think back about becoming a coach, how did your experiences as a student athlete help you to become a coach? I would say as soon as Hallie got here um, my sophomore year, even when Coach Z Hall was here, um, I helped a lot with recruiting. When recruits would come to campus, um, most of the time I would help out with their tours or their day, whatever their schedule was like. Um, and so going through college, the stepping out of like my comfort zone and getting to meet new people, meeting new parents, things like that, talking about the program, I think it really got me excited more excited about the program but also um 
it helped me it helps me now looking back of what has changed with Muskingum, what hasn't changed with Muskingum, um, and still continuing kind of what I did in college now. I would think, you know, if you're a volleyball parent coming into town and you're going on a recruit here, you, you've got to be such a perfect example of selling what the Muskingum experience is about. So well-rounded as a student athlete, you grew up here in New Concord, uh, the connections that you can make, I mean, you can see it firsthand how it's impacted you throughout your life and where you are at today. Um, what about when you look at how you approach your job and how you approach work, who's influenced you the most? Is it cliche time to say my parents, my, my mom, and my dad, two, two different people, but two of the same people. My mom is a very driven. So it's my dad. Uh, but my mom is very driven, very things need to be done right now or they're not going to get done. Um, so a lot of people will say they'll see that in me. Um, my dad, very passionate about his work. Um, and so I, I relate that to my job here. I'm very passionate about Hallie and the girls and Muskingum as a whole. Um, but I would say those are the two people that really influence who I am and how I work. That's great. Um, what about how do you like to start your day? Well, I mean, I have a four year old. <laughs> I have a nine month old puppy. Um, I have a husband. So in the mornings, I would love every morning to get up super early so that I'm organized <laughs> Um, and not chaotic. <laughs> that would be my dream every morning, getting up early, um, really getting everybody out the door, seeing everybody, and then looking forward to later on in the day. Uh, what about when you come to work? What is it that energizes you? Tom, probably seeing the girls. I mean, I love doing the admin stuff in the office and, and talking to um, other colleagues, but seeing the girls, getting into practice, getting to be able to do jump training and things like that, um, it's very exciting and <laughs> they, they bring the most energy to work and Hallie will contest to that. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, you know, just seeing, you know, the volleyball student athletes on our campus, I mean, seeing them in the gym and some of it was pre COVID, uh, cause now things are kind of different a little bit, but always in there working on their game, working to take that next step to get better, uh, even on the campus walking around, I mean, you can tell the volleyball players always energized, wanting to get out there on the court, wanting to uh, succeed and be successful. Um, what about outside of work? What is it that gets you energized? I would say my family. I mean, we, we do a lot together. I'm very family oriented. Um, so really my four-year-old, I would say it energizes me, but also drains me at the same time. <laughs> um, but definitely, definitely Addison. And then um, like I said, we've got a puppy and we've got another one, another baby on the way. So there's going to be a lot of energy and a lot of energy draining. <laughs> well, I do think that most people on campus know Addison. They see her at all the volleyball matches, always smiling, such a, such a happy person um, that brings joy to everyone. Uh, what about a work-related accomplishment that you're proud of? I would definitely say last season, going to the NCAA tournament. I would say it's a, an accomplishment because we were able to share the title, the OAC title um, with Northern. Um, an accomplishment, but at the same time, it's something that drives me. So something that I didn't get to experience as a student athlete here on campus, um, but now I'm experiencing it as a coach. Um, and seeing it in our girls too, accomplishment of showing our girls really how how good they can be and, and how how hard they can push themselves and where they want to go. So that would, I would say it's an, an accomplishment, but at the same time, it's something that's I'm looking forward to, to doing again. Well, you know, that was something that not just impacted the volleyball team, but had a big impact on our campus. Uh, fortunate enough to have some of our students, uh, be there to see the pure emotion of, of a senior name show up on the, you know, the reveal board of where you're going to go play uh, B at the regional and getting that first win, you know, against Wittenberg and advancing out to the regional semifinals. Um, just such a, an amazing run an amazing season and looking forward to when we get back here on the court here shortly and, and starting that process up again. Uh, what's something that most people don't know about you? Tom, I love to paint. That's an easy question. I love to paint. If I could slow everything down and get more time in the day, I love to paint. <laughs> is, there, is there a certain thing you like to paint or just anything? No, no. I was in I was in AP art when I was in high school okay. and loved painting. It's something that just relaxes me. Um, I mean, there's a lot of craziness in the world, but painting for whatever reason is my like 
thing that a lot of people don't know about me. <laughs> it's your Zen, man. Let it, let it calm down. <laughs> take it off. I like that. Um, what's something that you've, you've seen recently that's made you smile? Recently, uh, we had a 3D ultrasound of my second one right here. And so getting to see her face and having another little girl. So getting to see her face and getting to see her facial reactions with things. It's really exciting. Made me smile and cry at the same time. So, uh, I mean, such a such a moment there. I remember with Tanner and Ty going through the ultrasounds and when you when you when you see them, it becomes it's just overwhelming at times. The emotion um, that comes through. Uh, what about who's giving you some really good advice? I would say, I mean, there's a lot of people that's given me some great advice throughout my life. My my dad um, gave me some advice um, of it takes courage to grow up to be the person that you truly are. Um, and I would relate that to pretty much every aspect of my life, whether that's being a wife, a mom, a coach, a friend, sister, um, you know, takes a lot of courage to, to fail and to try new things and step out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, it, it takes a lot of courage to get back up, do it again and, and, and own it too. So oh, that, that is some great advice. I mean, that that's advice that all of our students here on all our teams and campus could, could use. Um, just those words are so true. What about when you were a kid, when you were a kid growing up, what did you think you wanted to be? Like I said, Tom, I grew up in a family of all law enforcement. And so I knew there was never, I wanted to be a teacher and then I wanted to be a nurse and then I wanted to be a vet. Like I knew I wanted to go into law enforcement, just like mom and dad. Um, and I carried that dream all the way through college, all the way until I graduated, not until I actually got out and got in, into it that I decided that this might not be the right path for me. So, so, yep. What about if we if I was sitting around with some of your friends and we're down at Dairy Duchess, you know, it's summertime. Getting, getting, oh, yeah, getting the ice cream. What three words were your would your friends use to describe you? I would say passionate. I would say competitive and motivated all in the same word. Um, and then I would say probably loving or motherly. I'm very, I love hard, love very hard. <laughs> I tell you, those are three great words and phrases that if friends are looking at you at that way, then you, you're definitely making a connection um, as a special person. Uh, Taylor, if we're doing a movie, you know, it'd be a great movie here for you. Homegrown, <laughs> New Concord, come over here now coaching the volleyball team. Uh, who's going to star you in the movie? Who's who's Taylor Fowler? I mean, she looks absolutely nothing like me, even though I wish I did look more like her. I would say Sandra Bullock. I love Sandra Bullock. She's funny and she does all different types of, of movies. And so I would pray that it would be Sandra Bullock. <laughs> I like Sandra Bullock. I liked her in the movie Speed and some of her other movies out there. Um, I've always this enjoyed watching alley, her. My alley, so... <laughs> <laughs> what about, you know, in, in the time of COVID, there's been a lot more staying at home, not going out as much. Uh, if you had one meal, one, one go-to food that you had to eat for the rest of your life, what's your, what's your go-to? That's very hard being pregnant now and eating everything. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say one thing for the rest of my life would be watermelon. I could eat watermelon until I am physically ill. Water and maybe after that. <laughs> Okay. I like, I like watermelon too. I mean, it's, <laughs> to me, it's, it's, it's yummy. I mean, I like it, but okay. Also in the time of COVID, you know, digital age has become even more prominent uh, with your phone. If you could only have three apps on your phone, what three apps are you using? <sighs> You're going to judge me for this, Tom. I'm going to say probably Facebook because Facebook cracks me up with my grandmother and my mother posting all different sorts of stuff. Funny, it cracks me up. That's why book. Um, I am guilty of TikTok. I don't make TikToks, but I love watching TikTok. So I would say TikTok. Um, I don't know the third one, Tom. I'm really big into pictures and things like that. So maybe something with my pictures. <laughs> hey, I think I could see you and Hallie doing a TikTok and having it go viral. I really, I think that could happen. No, no, Hallie would not be jumping on TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you never know, right? Um, yeah, good, good stuff there. And I can, I can relate to the Facebook because, like, my mom, Mary Best mom, 
the things they put out on Facebook nonstop, the comments they put on every picture <laughs> cracks me up. Um, yes. <laughs> what about like a, a TV show? I mean, do you have a TV show that you'd like to sit down and watch something you'd like to binge? I would say Grey's Anatomy. I am. I love Grey's Anatomy. I'm guilty of loving The Bachelor and all its drama and Bachelorette, let's say that. So, I mean, I would say binge watching Grey's Anatomy, but on Monday nights, I'm watching The Bachelor and Bachelorette. <laughs> well, I can tell you that The Bachelor and Bachelorette are on at our house on Monday nights with uh, Mary Beth and Tanner watching all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'm up to speed on what's happening on those shows. Uh, what about bringing it back here to Muskingum now? What do you want like to do to get ready for game day? Throughout the week, Hallie and I do all of our preparation before game day. So the day of game day, we try to, I would say, bring it down before we bring it back up again. Um, so preparation is done before game day. Um, and then game day is making sure everything's prepared, the game's ready, the, or the game day stuff's ready, um, the girls are ready, things like that, little things that come up during game day. We do have a couple of game day rituals, though, like Hallie loves to drink her monsters, so I have joined in the ritual. Others not proud of it, um, but I drink a monster before a game. So that's just something that we do. Um, normally, Hallie and I are eating together and things like that before the game. Um, normally there's a wardrobe change in the office before the game. So yeah, that's a, that's a typical game day for Hallie and I and the girls. Now, what about another game day ritual that has been around with the volleyball team, the pregame dance party? Oh boy. When did that start? Were you a part of it when you were a player here or did it start afterwards? The ga the game day dances that we did when we were in school and my class would contest to this was just kind of just chaos. Like it just chaos dancing and and the music and just getting kind of hot and sweaty before we get up to the gym. The girls currently though have now done choreography dances and they are into, I mean, Hallie's even told them, Hey, if you can get into um, the greatest showman dances and show me some of that, like she wants to see that the girls do footloose in the locker room. Um, Man, I mean, they they steam up that locker room with all the dances. So, yes, that is something that they have to do. And it's kind of a ritual between, like, practices, too. They'll do stuff before practices like that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it was great last year at the Regional that um, we had a little access to the pregame dance party uh, when one of our students was in there with their phone and gave a little bit of a glimpse of that back out to the Muskie fans. And just what what an environment. Uh, so much fun to get jacked up before you're going out to, to take on the opponent on the court. Um, just, a, I love that ritual. I mean, it's so fun. Uh, in 2019, I mean, you've talked about it. Down two sets at Heidelberg, come back to win three straight to win a share of the OAC title. Uh, advance the regional semifinals. Take us to the emotion of that stretch. I mean, that was a stretch run of so much emotion to um, for you and your team. Going to Heidelberg, traveling to Heidelberg and Berg coming to us, it's a long drive. Um, the day that we went there, um, it was cold, it was rainy, um, and the girls did not get off the bus to play. All the girls will say that, Hallie and I will say that until God knows how long. Um, it took them a while to, to get into it, but once they did, it, it obviously went a lot better. Um, the end of the fifth set, we were down three or four points at that point. Um, and the girls kind of, it just kind of looked like a switch in their heads. It's either we're going to go hard and we're going to go out with a bang or it's over with. And so the girls, the girls really just, they, at that point, they, they couldn't do anything wrong. I wish that would have started at the beginning of the game, <laughs> <laughs> but there at the end, it was fantastic. It was great to see their reaction of knowing that they've, that was, that title was shared now, um, an accomplishment that they and a goal that they had set for how many years now to have a title of the OAC. Um, then going and going into getting into the NCAA tournament, um, that was something that they obviously hadn't experienced. I hadn't experienced, but Hallie had. Um, Hallie, when we got into it, Hallie immediately turned on that like NCAA mode. I don't know what she wants to call it. Um, but she went like 
five steps ahead to where I needed to catch up. Um, so at that point, it was a lot of excitement with me and with the girls. They were really, really excited. Um, but with me, I was running on adrenaline at that point of making sure we were ready to roll, um, ready. The girls were ready to leave. Things were prepared in the office and things like that. Um, going to Michigan was something that, I mean, I feel like it went like that. Um, so we had an, an amazing time up there. Um, I wouldn't say it was a roller coaster of emotions because the girls were really excited to play. They, um, I wouldn't say there was any lack of focus because, you know, with girls sometimes traveling to a different area in a different environment, excuse me, can, can throw things off, but they did a fantastic job of staying focused and of what their goal was. Um, and they played really hard up there. And that's, that's all that Hallie and I could have, could have asked for, but now, now they have a taste of what it was like. And so I think when we come back home, back to new Concord, that's something that every single day drives them. Well, that's the thing. How important was that taking that next step? I mean, once you get that taste, you, you get that experience. Not only did you get the experience, you, you won the opening round match against Hallie's alma mater. I mean, Wittenberg, uh, that had to be a special moment in, in itself. Um, now the hunger is there to go further. Um, and the capabilities are certainly there on the team to do that. Uh, Right out the back door here to the rec center, building the health and wellness complex, $30 million state of the art facility, going to combine, you know, athletics, academics, the community, uh, diagnostic hubs. It's going to hit so many key components, not just for Muskingum uh, and, and New Concord, but the region. It's going to be, you know, a, a centerpiece on our campus. How will the HWC impact the volleyball program? Tom, it's what we've seen. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. We're super excited. Um, our recruits, our incoming freshmen, um, they're really excited about it. I think for volleyball wise, it's going to be fantastic because it gives more space for all of our sports here on campus. It gives more space to kind of spread out, um, which only helps us all, really. Mm -hmm. um, I think the girls are really going to enjoy being able just to have another space to to go, to work out. Um and honestly, to look at, it's going to be beautiful. So, uh, it's, it's gorgeous facility. If you if you want to see it, uh, muskingum.edu backslash hwc. You can look on the cam. Uh, a live webcam shows the progress, and it's hard to believe the progress that's happened from probably when we started in the in this you know what the fall to where we are now. Uh, it, it's it's moving along. Uh, fall of 2022 is the targeted opening date, if not sooner. Uh, really looking forward to our student athletes, our alumni and the community uh, having a chance to to see this building and what it can bring to uh, to the university. Um, Coach, I want to thank you for taking time today. Uh, great to get together and chat a little bit about Muskie Volleyball, about your background uh, here on Coffee with Coaches, presented by Jennings Java, um, freshest roast around, JenningsJava.com. Uh, so, Coach, thank you so much. Uh, I hope hope you enjoyed the time. Yeah, I did. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Thanks a lot, coach. And go Muskies. Go Muskies.